Hi, um, today we're going to scan this screw, which is a dark object. Now this one is a nice Home Depot deck screw and it came with, um, it has like a, a dark blue paint on it. So I'm just gonna scan it as is. But typically if something is dark or metallic, you should coat it with something white. Um, you, can, you can buy scanner spray if you wanna spend $40 a can or you could save some money and use dry shampoo, which is under $10 a can, although they're pretty small cans, so I don't really like using them. You could also mix cornstarch with isopropyl alcohol, and that washes off really easily. It's not the whitest stuff, so if you want something really white, you could get either zinc oxide or titanium dioxide powder and mix it with either 99% isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol. Those don't wash off as easily as cornstarch, so I wouldn't put those on something like um, an electronic device, but if it's, a, if it's a tool or something, you can do that. But in any case, we're just gonna scan this screw as it is. So I have the dual axis turntable, and I'm going to place it on it. Now, when you scan something that is either symmetrical or doesn't have a lot of features, you really have to give it something to track. One thing you can do is take a bunch of small objects and put them all over the turntable so that when the scanner sees it, it helps it track the object. You can also just crumble up a piece of paper and if you can get it fairly flat so that it's under the object and that helps a lot. You could take masking tape and make little masking tape balls and put them on an object. But in this case, I 3D printed this little stand, which I made in Fusion 360, and it has a bunch of bumps on it that I think will be good enough. So I'm not going to put a bunch of junk on this table. Now, over here with the software, you have automatic exposure. but I'm going to put it in manual and turn it up until I just see some red overexposure on the object and back it down one. Now, if you look up here, you'll see I'm in the excellent distance range. That's good. I'm going to reduce my scanning distance just so that it doesn't collect as many points, but it won't anyway because there's nothing far away. And now you have to know where to start and stop to do a 360. I'm just going to stick an object on this so that when it crosses with me, I'm gonna hit start. So I'm starting. And when it comes all the way around, I'm going to stop. All right, so that's complete. You could click the one click if you want, but I'm going to just go right to Fusion, slide this to the left for the most detail because it's a very small object, and hit Apply.
Now you can hit the isolation button. Delete everything that's not connected. And I just wanted to show you like all the bumps I have on this fixture that really helped it track. But you don't have to 3D print something, you could just use crumpled up paper. But I am going to uh, chop that off. Kind of hit this overlap. And then I'm going to hit mesh. Slide this up all the way. Hit apply. And you can click fill holes. Um, control A selects all and hit apply. And there you go. So that's our screw. Now, if you wanted to get the missing part, you could flip this over, scan the other side, and merge the two. Sometimes merging is tricky, and what you can do is make sure you have good overlapping regions. When you do that, it helps a lot. So thank you for watching, and that's it for now.